It began with a wave of optimism about Africa's future. In 1963, when a group of 32 independent African nations created the Organization of African Unity, which later became the African Union. Compared to the European Union, the African Union was formed just five years after the formation of the European Union, but is six times bigger given that Africa has the most number of countries in a continent of any continent in the world. In this video, we are going to talk about the origins of the African Union, what it does, whether it is effective, and what its future might hold. Welcome to Reason Africa. Member states of the African Union cover almost the entirety of continental Africa, and several offshore islands except for several territories held by Spain like Ceuta, Melilla, and Peño de Vélez de la Gomera. In addition, European countries have dependencies among African islands, such as France in Mayotte, Reunion, and scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, Portugal with the Azores, Madeira and the Savage Islands, and the United Kingdom with St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan and Cunha. The official languages of the African Union are Arabic, English, French, Portuguese, Spanish, Swahili, and any other African language. Its promise was to bring Africans together and propel the continent towards peaceful coexistence, eradication of all forms of colonialism, economic growth, and cooperation. Unite we must! was one of the rallying calls made by Ghana's Kwame Nkrumah to his peers during the first ever conference of the African Union in Addis Ababa. This decade is the decade of African independence. Forward then to independence, to independence now. Tomorrow, the United States of Africa. Without necessarily sacrificing our sovereignties, big or small, we can, here and now, forge a political union based on defense, foreign affairs and diplomacy, and a common citizenship, an African currency, an African monetary zone, and an African central bank. Soon after achieving independence in the 60s, a number of African states expressed a growing desire for a united Africa. Not everyone was agreed on how this unity could be achieved, however, and two factions emerged in this respect. First, the Casablanca bloc, led by Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, wanted a federation of all African countries into one federal unit like the United States of America. Aside from Ghana, it also comprised Algeria, Guinea, Morocco, Egypt, Mali, and Libya. Second was the Monrovian bloc, led by Leopold Senghor of Senegal, felt that unity should be achieved gradually through economic cooperation. It did not support the notion of a political federation. Its other members were Nigeria, Liberia, Ethiopia, and most of the former French colonies. Despite the antagonistic position separating them, the groups both favored to set up an African institution based on the principles of state sovereignty and non-interference in the internal affairs of member states. The dispute was eventually resolved when Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie I invited the two groups to Addis Ababa, where the Organization of African Unity and its headquarters were subsequently established. Decolonization and African rule, particularly in the colonial settler states of Algeria, Kenya and South Africa, where racism was institutionalized, were major achievements of the OAU. The culminating effect was the liberation of South Africa from apartheid in 1994, ending 82 years of struggle through 31 years of support by the continent through the OAU. The solid opposition to white minority rule and colonialism is undoubtedly the OAU's greatest achievement. It succeeded in mobilizing African and world opinion against colonialists in the last Portuguese colonies of Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, and Sao Tome and Principe, and against settler states of Namibia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. 
The organization was however viewed critically for failing to address many of the continent's issues, mainly the policy of non-interference in the affairs of member states severely limited the effectiveness of the body. The organization expressed little or no solidarity with Africans facing challenges from their own governments and never recognized the legitimacy of African struggles against African tyrants. Often dubbed the Dictator's Club, it gained a reputation for being a mere talking shop. It struggled to enforce its decisions and its lack of an armed force made military intervention exceedingly difficult. Civil wars in Nigeria, Angola and Rwanda continued unabated for years and the OAU could do nothing to stop them. In the year 2000, in a move spearheaded by Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, it was proposed that the Organization of African Unity be replaced by a new body, the African Union. Its structure is loosely modeled on that of the European Union. The African Union was to be more economic in nature, similar to its counterpart in Europe, and would contain a central bank, a court of justice, a human rights court, an all-Africa parliament, and by 2023, an African economic community with a common currency called the Afro. After a transition period, the African Union replaced the OAU in July 2002 with 51 member states. The AU came equipped with stronger administrative mechanism, greater powers of intervention, and an armed force equipped for humanitarian intervention. It is made up of both political and administrative bodies. The leadership consists of a chairperson, where leaders who hold office rotate on an annual basis, the assembly, which comprises heads of state of member countries who meet at least once a year. It is the AU's main decision-making body. Members of the assembly are also tasked with electing the AU chairperson. The executive council. This comprises foreign ministers of member states who advise assembly members, and finally the commission. This is the administrative branch comprising 10 commissioners who hold individual portfolios. The commission implements AU policies and coordinates the body's activities and meetings. The AU set about distancing itself from OAU by often suspending countries where coups take place and readmitting them when they return to constitutional rule. To this end, it set up a Peace and Security Council in 2004. The Council may intervene in conflicts, replacing the old OAU principle of non-interference with one of non-indifference. South Sudan became the 54th member state when it became the world's youngest nation in 2011. For over 30 years, the only African country that was a United Nations member but not a member of the African Union was Morocco, which withdrew from the OAU in 1984 after the body granted membership to the Saharan Arab Democratic Republic set up by the independence movement in the disputed territory of Western Sahara. It became the 55th country in the Union. Morocco was later readmitted in the AU in 2007. The African Union, however, came under sharp criticism over its failure to act over the civil war in Libya and its silent demeanor when Gaddafi was removed from power by Western nations. Africa has come a long way since the formation of what became the AU. It has created many useful decision-making structures that have contributed to the prevention, management and resolution of conflicts in Africa. The AU has, however, been less successful in connecting its activities and programs to many ordinary Africans, like providing common public goods and services valued by commoners in Africa, giving voice to the majority of young people in the continent, promoting intra-Africa trade, good governance and financial independence of the African continent, as well as struggled to address the expressed material needs and concerns of ordinary Africans.
A major problem confronting the African Union is resources. It has been reported that five of the continent's most prosperous countries, Algeria, Egypt, Libya, Nigeria and South Africa, used to cover 70% of the budget. China paid for the new AU headquarters in Addis Ababa at a cost of $200 million, prompting some concern among African observers that China is trying to buy influence in the AU as it extends its economic presence on the continent. China was put under a microscope after it came out that it had been spying on African Union meetings for more than five years, gaining access to confidential information. Long-standing doubts over Beijing's role at the AU spilled into the open in 2018 when French newspaper Le Monde reported that AU employees had found that the servers at the new conference center were sending copies of their contents to Shanghai every night and that the building itself had been honeycombed with listening devices. In addition to government's inadequate political will, the lack of resources for peace and security as well as economic cooperation is partly because countries are also members of multiple regional institutions. It is not uncommon for a country to belong to three or more regional economic groups. By spreading themselves thin, countries deprive institutions of the skills and money they need. This raises the question of how strongly committed African leaders are to economic and political integration. The AU was founded with the longer-term goal of total political union, and most African leaders say they support the idea in principle. But some countries, normally led by South Africa and Ethiopia, have fiercely contested discussions of the possibility and say that it would infringe on their sovereignty. Compared to the OAU years, Africa undoubtedly has registered some commendable progress under the African Union. Although the financial problems are something to keep an eye on, the African Union has shown good progress and is going in the right direction. I'd like to profoundly thank our great supporters on Patreon, whose generous contributions allow us to keep expanding and creating more high-quality content. If you'd like to support the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.